Ever wondered why the best tennis players in the world use synthetic strings despite knowing about the benefits of natural gut? As an average tennis player, choosing the right strings for yourself might be that single missing piece needed to take your game to the next level. In the last episode, we dealt with the stench from the natural gut factory. Oh my god, I'm literally tearing up right now. But today, we're inside Babolat's HQ in Korba. Here we go, this is where the magic happens. Here, they churn out 200,000 meters of synthetic string every single day. Chances are, if you've ever played with Babolat strings, those fibers were born in this very building. But here's where it gets crazy. Today, we're gonna show you how these plastic beads turn into the strings that you use in your frame each day. But that's not all. You're also going to be seeing some of the personalized racket frames from some of the best players in the world. And hopefully, at the end of the video, you'll know the right strings for your style of play. The Corbas site was established in 2011, and four different activities take place here. String production, service to athletes, the performance lab, and logistics. Starting with the string production, oh, I forgot to mention that the very first synthetic tennis strings were produced in 1955 and were essentially created to provide a more cost-effective string choice. Synthetic strings are made primarily from nylon, polyester, or Kevlar, either individually or in some combination, using a single solid strand or up to hundreds of small filaments. Babolat makes 70% monofilament and 30% multi-fiber strings for reference. Over the decades, we've seen so many legends of the game use these strings. Wait, check this out. It's quite the wall of fame here. Carlos Moya won the first Grand Slam with a Babolat racket. Kim Kleister's friend of the channel. Of course, we got Carlitos. My personal favorite, Yannick Noah, for obvious reasons. And the clay goat himself, the Babolat goat, Rafa, up there. We also got to see Rafa's commemorative rackets up close at the factory in Korba. Okay, okay, this is freaking cool. So what we have here is one of Rafa's commemorative rackets. There were only 92 of these made, uh, 92 for his 92 titles. Uh, we saw one in the gut factory yesterday. Um, Rafa, I'm sure, has one. Eric Babalat has one. Of course, you have to have one here in the Babalat synthetic factory. It's made out of pure bronze, so not exactly sure how this would translate to your game on court, but it looks really freaking cool nonetheless. Okay, these are also really cool. Sorry, I'm like a kid in the candy store right now. This was the Babolat Lamborghini collab. So literally the only thing to come out of the Lamborghini factory that wasn't actually a car. Um, these were made from Lamborghini carbon fiber with the Babolat paddle technology. And I hear they're selling these for a cool uh, $5,000 a pop. I don't know if you, you even play with that at that point. Like. I'd probably just stick this on my wall. Okay, let's check this out. This is what I was talking about here. <laughs> RPM Blast, just feel this. Babolat launched the popular RPM Blast in 2010, and 200,000 meters of strings are made every single day in this facility. If you've ever played with the RPM Blast, you might have noticed a huge difference in stiffness compared to natural gut. This is a tough poly, Holy this is crap. stiff. It's like spaghetti. You com compare this to the natural gut that we were feeling yesterday, where it's soft, it's very pliable. This is stiff. We'll come back to the difference between synthetic strings and natural gut later in the video, but let's first talk about the core elements in a synthetic string and how these strings are actually made. Synthetic strings are made up of three main elements. The core, which could be monofilament or multifilament. The core is the load-bearing part of the string, and it determines the string's characteristics, such as its stiffness and resiliency. The jacket, which protects the core from abrasion. Jackets are either twisted or braided over the core. Twisting creates a somewhat smoother surface, making it easier to string in the racket, while braiding produces a more textured surface for more bite on the ball. The third layer is the outer coating. Strings are usually coated with a resin which bonds the other layers together, creating a smooth, finished surface. But now it's time to start our tour. First things first, we had to put on our protective footwear, which wasn't exactly the easiest thing in the world to do. Good to go. After that, we met Michel, the factory manager, who became our guide for the day. I am Michel Rocher. I am synthetic cold string manager, and I show you now the factory, the string factory for string everywhere in in the world. So how are these strings actually made? Carefully selected polymers, primarily polyester for RPM blast strings, arrive at the facility in pellet form, small uniform beads that contain the foundation of what will become premium tennis strings. So that becomes strings, ultimately. The more you know. Pretty crazy that those little beads 
um, get turned into the filaments that make uh, the strings that we know and love. These pellets then undergo a sophisticated extrusion process where they're heated to precise temperatures, transforming them from solid beads into a malleable material. We have uh, plastic materials. Here you know, it's PU. We push the materials at uh, 80, uh, 190 degrees. Here you know, it's a second coating with uh, different materials. This one is a poly polyamide. The materials go to 300 degrees. And we push, but it's in color, but from here and here, we have a coating around, and now we're finished at one, uh, 125. This critical phase requires extraordinary precision, as variations of even a fraction of a millimeter can affect a string's performance characteristics. As the extruded material cools and solidifies, it passes through secondary processing stations where precise machinery creates the string's distinctive surface characteristics that give players a more enhanced bite on the ball. So here they are, what they're basically doing is heating up the string to make it a little bit softer, and then running it through this groove discs right here, just to get that rough texture. And, and of course that rough texture is what allows the player to generate a lot of spin. And so this is where the string comes out after it went through the machine where it was heated up and printed in. And now if you take a look here, it's rough. You can feel the friction. I can feel the friction on my fingers, but now the texture is very rough. And again, like I said, that's what helps the players just generate those crazy amounts of spin. And just what stands out to me is just how much more automated the process is around these strings. You compare that to the natural gut where you have the guys going through with their bare hands and sifting through the cow intestines, um, compared to this where it's almost done entirely by machines. And it's more on like the human element to just quality control and actually test to make sure the strings are up to par. Specialized machines measure tensile strength, elongation properties, and elasticity under various conditions. We then checked out the stop that proves you're genuinely using Babolat strings. Here, they use an incredibly fast inkjet printer that grazes over the strings. We print a message on the string, the commercial name, XL125 made in France, and a batch number. Bye. Just one. But I made in France. So, no. wow. so now we're at the end of the line. We just saw the whole process of how the string was made, um, going from those plastic pellets um, to the multi-filaments until they're wrapped into more or less the string that we see here. So right here, the strings are getting uh, put onto the reels and they do about a thousand of these a day. And this is just of the RPM blast. Next stop is the Athlete Service Center where we see an up close view of how Babolat personalizes rackets for the top pro players. Babolat makes anywhere from six to 60 customized rackets per player every year, which adds up to 1500 customized rackets annually. It takes anywhere from 20 to 120 minutes to customize a racket. The same goes for the racket. Head. Babolat customizes about 4 to 8 per player per year and about 200 to 250 personalized racket heads. The goal here is to make sure each racket is as consistent as possible. So actually what I learned is that when the rackets come off the factory line, um, they're a little bit different. Uh, the weight could be off by like a couple grams here or there. But for the top players, like Holger Runa, whose racket I've got right here, um, they need it to be as consistent as possible because even if the weight is off by a gram or two, they'll feel the difference. So for these top players, the Babolat team will give special attention, adding weight um, and customizing the racket to make sure that it meets the player's needs exactly before shipping it off to them. And over here is Alcarez. Now, Alcarez's racket here is unstrung. Holger's is strung. And let me tell you, the weight on this is insane. Um, we saw the news that Carlos was adding weight to his frame to generate more power just on the dead balls. Um, which is pretty necessary and it's working for him. But you can see right here the weight that Carlos has added on the throat. Since October. But no, and you know, at the end. And you compare that to Holger, who's playing uh, at 312 grams um, strung. So this is a really, really light frame compared to what Alcaraz is using. After that, we move to the performance lab. We will see different type of bench uh, durability test, more to see the resistance of the different products, but also performance tests to link to the playability. Here, Babolat connects the specific lab tests with play tests to study future concepts. They also do control analysis and research to help with better understanding of the game, the player, and the products overall. A total of 120 different lab tests are available here in Corba, and these are some of the key performance indicators. 
Once the strings pass inspection, they move to packaging stations where precise measuring and cutting machines prepare them for players around the world. So this is where like all the orders come and get sorted before getting shipped out but literally all around the world. Every Babolat product, whether that's coming from Asia and then coming through the factory here, every string, every racket, every bag is coming through this warehouse before getting shipped out to the customer. Babolat has close to 10,000 customers served in 116 countries across six continents. I was blown away with the scale of the business. But now to the all important question, what strings are best for you? Choosing the right tennis string can be super confusing because there are so many options out there. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the individual. If you want to try out natural gut because maybe you've got elbow or wrist issues like me, or you really just prefer that extreme touch and feel, then I highly recommend you go for it. Trust me, you won't regret it. Plus, if you rely on heavy topspin and acceleration, then the natural gut might be a better option for you as well. Now, when compared to natural gut, synthetic gut strings don't last nearly as long, they break easier, and they don't hold tension as well, and they also don't have that same feel and touch that natural gut has. But on the upside, and this is a big upside, they're way cheaper. They also might be the better option if you typically hit flatter or if you need that extra little boost of power. If you want more playability, touch, and feel, more than what you get from the regular synthetic string, then you might want to try out multi-filament strings. Many doubles players use multi-filament strings to find that extra bit of touch and feel around the net. Many players these days also have a hybrid setup with one string material on the mains and a different one on the crosses. Plus, there are different types of gauges, tensions, string thickness to factor in as well. So there you have it. Honestly, it was super cool going behind the scenes with Babolat here at the factory in Corba, seeing how the strings were made, the RPM blast that I used to use myself, seeing the Pure Arrow, which I play with now, and not to mention the play testing and the customization, going behind the scenes and seeing just what goes into the frames that the pros are using. Um, it just goes to show why Babolat has been an industry leader, is today, and will be well into the future. But let me know down below in the comments. What racket setup are you using, and what part of your game are you currently working on? 